All right, let's do some talking Texans today. Let's talk Texans. Let's talk Browns. Let's do it with the man that knows this team really well. DJ Bianami from ESPN.com. Welcome in, brother. Thank you for having me. You know, who would have thought at this moment <laughs> in time in January, we'd be covering a playoff game. Last week, it was so funny. Them playing the Colts last year around that time in 2023, they were playing for, you know, draft position. Yeah. Right. And when they lost that game, Texas fans were like, oh, my God. When they, they won, a, they were they won, yeah, when, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, my God, we won that game. And now we're, we're going to miss out on Bryce Young. Now they got CJ and now they're in the playoffs a whole year later. Your prediction preseason was what? Don't lie. Oh, this so talking Texas. I was like seven wins. That was my prediction. That's, that's on the higher end. Yeah, because I was like, when I looked at the roster, right, you mm -hmm. had Derek Stingley and Steven Nelson who have played very well this year. My only question really on the defensive side was more like linebacker spot. I knew the D-line was going to be much better. You add in Will, Sheldon Rankins, and then John DeGunard was going to take a step up because he had eight sacks in 2021. Mm -hmm. So it was only, you know, fitting that in the Miko scheme, he was going to take a step forward. So I knew defense was going to be improved. Offensively, I knew the O-line with Laramie Tunsil, Shaq Mason, Titus Howard should be better. And then... You Everyone know. got hurt, though. Right, and yeah. everybody got hurt, right. So, you know, but coming in, I would think, okay, you know, they have the O-line. They got a reliable, solid tight end. Only question is CJ and the, and the receivers, and those two groups have <laughs> exploded <laughs> this year. So that's how we're in now here where they have 10 wins and are hosting a playoff game. You mentioned Sting. Yeah. I, I don't know if this dude can be underrated at this point, but it seems like he's underrated. He had a 1.7 passer rating against last week. <laughs> I mean, it's like a Tiger Woods handicap type number. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's stupid good. Yes. I, I don't think people understand how good Derek Stingley is. Yeah. You, when a quarterback drops back the pass, when it comes to passer rating, if they just spike the ball every single time for the entire game, their passer rating will be 39. The fact that since week 13, <laughs> his passer rating is 1.7 when targeting him is absolutely insane. And the fact that he didn't make a Pro Bowl, now it really feels like a snub because Derek Sting was the first cornerback to win the defensive player of the month since J.C. Jackson did it during the 2021 season. The guy before that was Stephon Gilmore, who won it in 2019 when he ended up winning Defensive Player of the Year. So I think he still is, to your question, underrated still. And he takes away half the field now. And yeah. now because quarterbacks are like, no, I'm good. Not yeah. going to wherever he is. So with that being said, if they don't put him on Amari Cooper, <laughs> a significant portion of this game, I understand that the scheme doesn't allow for it will be a little bit more flexible, if you will, and not let a guy go for 260 plus, <laughs> two touchdowns, 11 catches on 15 targets. Like, let's narrow it down just a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. Like, I'm, I'm not a big travel guy. And he wants guy. to. Yeah. I talked to him. He wants to. Yeah, of course. I, I, I'm not a big travel guy, but I think for this game, especially since they don't have Elijah Moore, who, who was in the concussion protocol, it's basically Amari and David Njoku, their tight end. So, yeah, I'm with you there. Put Sting on Amari Cooper. Let him – because – I remember someone asked me about putting him on Michael Pittman last week, and eh, that's whatever. Amari? Mm -hmm, yeah. Amari went for 265 last game. You might need to have Sting travel in it. Okay, maybe no, not always with, with Sting. Not uh, maybe not in the slot. Like, yeah. if he's in the slot and they want to hide him there. I might be good there, with the slot. I might be good with the slot. slot so, you know? are you not good with the other side? I'm, I'm not good with him in the slot, possibly on the other side. Maybe okay, if so, Amari sometimes going So, out of the four positions, you're good of, of 75% of them. If seven, yeah, I'm, I'm good on 75 Because maybe, you know, you could put Steven Nelson on him on, in the slot on Steven Nelson's side. But I think in critical downs, you might have to put Stingley on Amari Cooper. Because, again, if you can limit Amari Cooper, who is their number one target, that's going to limit their entire pass game led by, obviously, Amari. And, they, you know, you can affect Joe Flacco. But if we're being honest, a lot of it didn't come down to the cornerback play on Amari. It was yeah. a safety play. Yeah, yeah. And it was Jalen Petrie who got benched in that game. And kudos yeah. to him. One, he kept his head in that game and got that onside kick recovery. Yep. Two, he's earned himself back on the field. How are those guys going to be better because there's no Jimmy Ward? That's a great question. Thank you, man. That's why I get paid. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. They're going to have to have good eye discipline mm -hmm. because on the first play of the game, when, Amar um, when Amari and Joe Flacco connected for the 53-yard deep pass, first play of the game, that was bad eyes between the safety and uh, Steven Nelson, um, who was supposed to have over-the-top help. So I think this, this week, just have good eyes and stay deep because – when you give up explosives, that increases the possibility of offense being able to score. So if you can make them have to drive the length of the field, you get back, you prevent the explosives, eventually a mistake is going to happen. And yes, Joe Flacco has been exceptional, but he's also thrown some interceptions, and he's not bound to do that if you get pressure on him. Here's where my positive side comes out with this game. They, the Texans played as bad as I've seen them play all season long. Yep. In that game, it was kind of close late. Not really. It was a little bit of a like, yeah, like yeah. garbage mop-up time type of points. But the explosive plays that they gave up in that game, 
I think you were about four, five, six yep. of them, yep. like 50 plus, not 25. Yeah, plus. exactly, exactly, exactly. It was, and I don't see that happening again. No, 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 no way. If that, if that happens again, D'Amico is going to lose even more of the hair that he doesn't have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't envision that scenario where they're consistently being able to create explosives through the pass game because they, they held them for the most part in the run game and they had one of the best, better run defenses in the league minus last week. But they're even with last week, they're still holding teams under 100 yards per game, which is top six in the NFL. So if they can, again, stop the run. Force Joe Flacco have to throw a lot, and they can find a way to neutralize Amari Cooper. Now, when they score 36, now it's going to come way down. And they have some kicker issues because their starting kicker, Dustin uh, Hopkins, isn't yeah, going to play. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to be out. Offensive side of the ball. I'm nervous about some of the playmaking ability because it wasn't there against the Colts. It yeah. felt like it was because there was that one drive that was super exciting and the one play to Nico Collins. Yeah. Like, there wasn't a whole lot of marching down the field, finding a whole lot of wide receivers. Like, CJ loves to spread the ball out. Yep. He'll hit 10, 11 guys in a game. Yep. Noah Brown, John Mechie, guys, what's up? You guys there? You guys home? <laughs> yeah, we need you. Yeah, no, I completely agree there. Like, as good, as great as Nico's been this year. And he's been. He's been awesome. All of it. Yes. You're going to need some other guys to step yeah. up because when you go against better defenses like the Browns defense, who has the number one pass ranked defense. If they don't, don't have Denzel Ward, though. That maybe makes that opens little, up. That makes it a little tricky. But, but even your point you know, holds. Ermison has been really good this year, mm -hmm. and so has uh, Greg Newsom. They've been really good, so they they might be able to withstand Denzel Ward missing some uh, this game because he's missed some time this year, and they've still been a top one, not top two, top three, not top four, but a top one defense. Not on in. the road though, which is interesting. Mm. The, the, the splits are crazy. Mm. Going into la the last game, they were giving up thirty on the road. Wow. I mean, those splits are, are nuts. And so I, I don't know if we're going to see him come back to, to, to ground just a little bit. Yeah. I How do you see the game playing out? What's your prediction? My, my prediction so far, I mean, I'm leaning. So far, so that means we're going to change it. Once yeah, we're yeah, yeah, yeah. I was leaning towards the Browns. I was leaning towards the Browns. But I think CJ coming back mm -hmm. in this game, I think that he's going to make enough plays to give – and the Texans defense is going to be better, way better, because you can't play any worse than how they played last time they played the Browns. Shot. Yeah, like you allowed 265 to one player in Amari Cooper – and again, like Joe Flacco. The Texans offense had 250 yards. <laughs> <laughs> the Am whole team. And Am Am Amari had 265 himself. But yeah. I do think in this matchup, they're not going to give up the, those amount of explosives. And I think they're going to keep the game close. And I think if they keep it close, which they've done a lot throughout the year in those last one possession type of moments in the fourth, they'll be able to come through mainly because they're seven and three in one possession games. Seven and three, mm -hmm. which and they have the seventh most wins. I, I, mean, think, they're, I think they're eight and two now. No, no, no. Was it 7-3? Yeah, 7-3. ESPN you're gave better, us a stat. You're they, gave, they, gave, they gave us a stat the wow. other day. That's, I asked. Heavens to best. Hey, listen. <laughs> if ESPN if, hey, said it. If <laughs> I'm wrong, it was them, not me. <laughs> but, yeah, 7-3 seven, seven in one possession games, and that's the, um, I think, the third most amount of wins in those scenarios. So, they've been really good, really good in the clutch. Yes, so, if they, they keep it like been. that, then I think they have a chance because CJ will find a way to pull it out. It's a scary way to live, though, man. Ooh, very I scary. I mean, it's – and this is – I get ahead of myself when I think about this, but next year, it's like when you look at the schedule, they're going to be playing a first-place schedule. Oh, yeah. You can't live the same way on no, those margins no. in that tough of, tough of schedule. No, like you just no. can't. No, you, you can't. But you said next year. Yeah, I exactly. so We don't need to go there. Next year. We don't need to get there. Ho You're right. Ho hopefully, they can worry about not living like that next week. They win this game to me if they average over 3.8 yards per carry on the ground. Yeah, I agree there. because they, they have to move yes, the ball on the ground. Yes, because if they, cause you, this is the, the last defense. I know you said that their splits home versus away is a lot different, but if you can't run the ball against this defense, forget about it. you can forget about it. Because, again, like, you don't have Tank Dell, so you need something else to help them, you know, be able to keep the game efficient. So, again, we can get into that when it's close and now backs are getting a little tight, you know, palms are getting a little sweaty. And you got you to make, you got to, people got to make plays and every mistake matters most, I mean, matters more. And we've seen throughout the year consistently how the Texans have always, for the most part, risen to the occasion as, again, seven to three, one possession game. So if they can get the run game going, they can have an efficient offense, chew clock, because, again, the Browns, again, with Joe Flacco, for whatever reason, they've been super explosive. 13 touchdowns in five games is Absolutely insane when you think about the fact he's only been there for about six weeks. So, again, limit, keep, <laughs> crazy we're saying this, keep Joe yeah, Flacco yeah, on the sidelines. <laughs> and you'll, you'll have a much better chance. So I completely agree with you. If they can run the ball and, and get in favorable situations where you don't have to be in third and ten trying to convert these long um, attempts against that Browns defense.
looking at this team this year, they have seemed to have avoided a lot of drama, a lot of question marks, a lot yeah. of situations that most NFL teams have just by the nature of playing 17 weeks and everyone have, thinking they're smarter, right? Yeah. What's the biggest question mark you've had over this team this year? Coming into the season, my biggest was – the receiver room like was it going to be consistent throughout the year and no like, i mean like the way they've handled something during the season like have they done something like f for instance oh, okay. previous years when i covered the panthers they dropped brian burns back in coverage on oh, certain okay, times on okay. third down and you're like guys like what are we doing it's your right, best right, pass right, 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 forward, right, right, right 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 what it was is it the take down situation where they had him inside blocking for me i had no problem with it yeah, it's I football no i don't know what you want to do <laughs> you can only mitigate yeah. like scary moments so much like you don't put him on punk coverage fine yeah but that's football so it happens what for you are you sitting here mean like i just don't understand what the coaching staff is doing in this moment oh okay so for me whatever the preparation was getting them ready for the panthers game <laughs> the, the falcons game I, was there prep? and the, and the jets is it a game double bye week? because like how in the world does Zach Wilson have arguably his best game of his career yeah. against the Texans coming off the fact that the Texans had just caught three interceptions off of Russell Wilson the previous week? How does Desmond Ritter throw for a career high at that point, 329 yards mm. and touchdown in that moment when he was on the verge of getting benched? How does he throw for that much in that situation? Obviously, three of the worst teams and quarterbacks in the NFL. Yeah, exactly. And then the Bryce Young game again at that point, that, that was his best game up until he played the Green Bay Packers. Mm -hmm. We finally a keyword finally threw for over 300 <laughs> yards, you know, and the, the second to last game of the year. So again, like I would say that, right? What was the preparation in those aspects for, again, you look like you forgot how to play defense at times against Entirely, those quarterbacks in those um, situations. Uh, Cause again, if they win one of those games, they're a 13 win team. Yeah. If they win what they're yeah, supposed to do, exactly. which is absurd. Yeah, think. exactly. They're, they're probably the three seed. And now they're getting Miami coming in versus having to play the Browns where, you know, that, I think that's a harder match for them as the Browns versus having Miami come into town. Yeah. I wanted them to go to the chiefs. Now I'm glad they don't because of the weather. Cause then we yeah, gotta oh be there. God. Like I don't need that in my life. Have you seen the weather? It's, it's like it's, 10 below. Oh my God. Like, that's funny, Jonathan always said it. We know him very well. He was like, man, I can't wait to go to Kansas City. They got, bar they got barbecue, you know, great barbecue. This is Saturday night before we, you know, finally. We got barbecue here, Jonathan. Yeah, <laughs> we got barbecue here. We got barbecue here, Jonathan. You know, that's my brother. But, yeah, now he was tripping on that. And now he's like, oh, I see the weather down. Now I don't want to go. That was always going to be the weather, brother. <laughs> but that place is so juiced. It's so amped. Buffalo's fun. You and I were talking about this before. Like, we just want to cover a game where the anticipation yes. lit and the hype live yes. up to each other. Yes. So that brings me to my next. Guys, gals, show up. Like, get in seats. Get amped. Get loud in the seats before kickoff. Like, Indianapolis, C.J. Stroud said that was the loudest stadium he's ever played in the NFL. He's played seven, eight games now at home. And Indianapolis did it in one game. Like, mm. What do you expect Saturday from the crowd? And what's your pitch to the guys and gals to get their tails out there? Like, this is what you've wanted for the last four years. This is why you've been boycotting the team because you didn't <laughs> like the way it was handled. Here we are. Like, great head coach, GM's doing well, and a great quarterback. My pitch is C.J. Stroud. Do you nice. want to go watch one of the best quarterbacks in the league play this week? C.J. Stroud is the guy that you want to go see. We're talking about a guy that could potentially be an MVP caliber type of quarterback to do what he did in year one, have the best – Touchdown interception ratio mm. paired with leading the league in passing yards per game. Mm. Pa uh, as a rookie, he's one of three, two other quarterbacks to do that. Who knows who those two other quarterbacks are? Peyton and Tom? No. Dang. Tom and Joe Montana. Uh, like, that guy. Yeah, you know, you're, you're in, as a rookie, he's in class with guys like Tom Brady and Joe Montana, two of the GOATs of this game as a rookie. So, yeah. Go see the show, because C.J. Shaw is the show. And if you make it loud, that's going to make it harder for the Browns to communicate things of that nature. And if they have a turnover because you're being super loud on third down, now the Texans take over with the ball in probably good field position. They score. That makes it a whole completely different game, and you can have that factor in it. Because, again, one reason why Miami struggles on the road the Miami Dolphins is because of the crowd noise mm -hmm. and they struggle with some of the just some communications pre-snap on offensive offensive side so the crowd can always have an effect on the game and if the Texan fans can do that now we're, we're looking at potential that they can go to the next round and end up playing Buffalo or Baltimore tell people where to find your work you can find my work on ESPN.com or just on Twitter at DJ Bianime. Either one, going to find a lot more. Actually, I have a piece on D'Amico Ryan's coming out this week. Should be pretty good. All right, follow me, then follow him. <laughs> All right, DJ, appreciate you, bro. Thank you for having me.